Hello everyone, welcome back to Comment Made Easy and I hope you all are doing very well. Before we begin, let me remind my dear students that the contents of this channel are only to supplement your knowledge, not to replace the regular online and offline classes in your institution. So please attend your classes and do not miss them. Also, if you like our contents, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos and share these videos with your friends, with your batchmates, with your juniors. Also, if you are a teacher, then with your students. Please follow our Facebook page and the link will be given in the description. In our previous video, we learned about the different levels of prevention. There are four levels of prevention, the primordial, primary, secondary and tertiary level. And today we shall learn about the different modes of intervention for each level of prevention. Intervention can be defined as any attempt to intervene or to interrupt the usual sequence in the development of disease in a man. So that is the definition of intervention. We know that there is primordial prevention, primary prevention, secondary prevention and tertiary prevention. We can say that primordial prevention is a part of primary prevention. So that is why we shall consider only primary prevention here. In primary prevention, the modes of intervention include health promotion and specific protection. In secondary prevention, we have early diagnosis and treatment, whereas in tertiary prevention, we have disability limitation and rehabilitation. We shall discuss all these modes of intervention individually. Let us start with the health promotion, which comes under the primary prevention. Health promotion is the process of enabling people to increase control over and to improve health. So that means it is in the hand of the person himself. So he can decide or he can have some control over his health. Uh, and it is not directed against any particular disease, rather it is intended to strengthen the host through variety of approaches. We are enabling the person to have control over his health. That means he can adapt some healthy lifestyle that will help him uh, protect against different diseases. And when I say different diseases, it can be multiple diseases at a time. Some uh, interventions which are uh, considered as different health promotion include the health education, environmental modification, nutritional interventions and lifestyle and behavior changes. So what is health education? If we give or part in the knowledge to the common people regarding different diseases. So what are the clinical features of a disease? How a disease occurs? How it can be prevented? How uh, this disease can be diagnosed or what to do when the disease is diagnosed? So all these things, the do's and don'ts, if we give this knowledge or education to the common people a lot of disease can be prevented so and also this is considered as one of the most cost effective interventions so this is health education making people aware of different diseases next is environmental modification we already know the role of environment in causation of different diseases there are a lot of diseases which occurs due to environmental factors so many infections uh, especially in the developed countries uh, have been controlled over the last many decades by effective environmental modifications even before the vaccines or chemotherapeutic drugs were available. So this is quite a common feature in western countries, the developed countries. These environmental interventions are non-clinical and generally do not involve any physician. So we can do it ourselves and provision of safe water, installation of sanitary latrines, control of insects and rodents, improvement of housing, all this can be the examples of different environmental modifications. What about nutritional interventions, food distribution and nutrition improvement of vulnerable groups? For example, child feeding programs, we have the mid meal program, etc. Uh, and then we also provide supplementary nutrition in the Anganwadi center. So these are basically nutritional interventions. There is also scope for food fortification and nutritional education, etc. Lifestyle and behavior changes because a lot of diseases, especially the non-communicable diseases occur due to our lifestyle. So there is definitely some role of lifestyle and behavioral changes. We can encourage people 
to be involved in different physical activities, hygiene and healthy lifestyles and discourage them from physical inactivity, any kind of addiction that can be smoking, alcohol, any tobacco addiction, etc. And modifying diet pattern. If a person, uh, you know, he takes healthy diet, uh, takes lot of dietary fiber and protein, etc. and avoid sugar, salt, then avoid spicy foods, junk foods, all these things can be useful for him that can be uh, very much beneficial in prevention of lots of non-communicable diseases obesity hypertension cardiovascular diseases etc so these were all the uh, health promotion next is specific protection here the interventions are aimed at specific diseases or specific health problems for example immunization so if a child is immunized with opv vaccine that means he will be protected against poliomyelitis this vaccine will not protect him or her against any other disease like mumps measles rubella so that means it is specific to a certain disease use of specific nutrients to you know uh, treat or to protect against any uh, specific nutritional deficiency giving iron folic acid tablet to prevent iron deficiency anemia is an example chemo prophylaxis protection against occupational hazards, protection against accidents. For example, um, we know there is uh, now it is mandatory to use uh, helmets during driving the two wheelers or seat belt while driving the four wheelers. And that will help us protect from different accidents, road traffic accidents. Then there is protection from carcinogens, avoidance of different allergens. The control of specific hazards in general environment like air pollution, noise control, etc. Control of consumer product quality and safety of food, drugs and cosmetics. So these are the examples, different examples of specific protection. Early diagnosis and treatment is uh, the mo mo modes of intervention for the secondary prevention where the disease has already taken place and we have to find out the disease as early as possible and we have to start the treatment. Now, the earlier a disease is diagnosed, the prognosis is better. That means we can initiate the treatment earlier. Also, that can ensure or, you know, we can somewhat prevent any kind of complication development. Uh, so that is why this is very important that we detect a disease as early as possible and start the treatment for it. The different uh, approaches can be screening where people do not have any sign symptoms so they are apparently healthy and then we try to find out any disease contact tracing then we can have individual examination like history taking relevant laboratory investigations etc and of course we have to start the treatment promptly uh, that can be either individual or mass for example mass drug administration for uh, prevention and control of filaria so these are the examples of early diagnosis and treatment next is the disability limitation which is a mode of intervention for tertiary prevention which means the disease has already occurred and we are trying to control the damage from it so any kind of complications that if that has already taken place we are trying to minimize it when a patient report late in the pathogenesis phase the mode of intervention is disability limitation in our previous video on natural history of disease we discussed what is pathogenesis phase so in late pathogenesis phase the disease has progressed to such a stage that there may be some kind of complication because of that and also permanent or long-term effect from the disease when the disease is diagnosed at this stage or maybe the disease was diagnosed earlier but the patient has come to the doctor or any hospital medical center very late in the uh, in the disease uh, sometimes the only option we have is the disability limitation because disability has already taken place and uh, what is the objective of disability limitation it is to halt the transition of the disease process from impairment to handicap so when the disease occurs first there is impairment uh, then it goes through the level of disability and then the stage of handicap now what is impairment disability and handicap we shall discuss in our future video definitely but for this discussion for this particular video let us try to understand that uh, in disability limitation we try to halt the disease process so that it does not reach to the level of handicap the last one is the rehabilitation another modes of intervention for tertiary prevention and often this 
definition is asked what is the rehabilitation what do you mean by rehabilitation uh, it is defined as the combined and coordinated use of medical social educational and vocational measures for training and retraining the individual to the highest possible level of functional ability if we try to explain this definition first of all this has to be a combined and coordinated use combined means not a single approach is ideal we have to combine all the approaches and coordinated they have to be coordinated among themselves what is the, what are the different approaches or measures we have medical social educational vocational etc so all these measures have to be combined together and what we have to do is we have to train and retrain the individual so the person who is suffering from a disease maybe some kind of impairment has taken place and maybe some handicap is also there so we have to train the person not only train you have to retrain him that means this training procedure has to be continued multiple times for a long period of time until we reach the highest possible level of functional ability so the person can act or function to his highest ability for reaching that level the person needs to be trained and retrained again and again and again so that is rehabilitation it includes all the measures aimed at reducing the impact of disabling and handicapping conditions and at enabling the disabled and handicapped to achieve social integration if we look at the uh, different types of rehabilitation we have medical rehabilitation where the restoration of a function for example after road traffic accident suppose a person has lost his legs so if artificial leg can be provided or if that is not also possible then we can uh, provide him with some kind of crutch or walker or even wheelchair so that is medical rehabilitation what about vocational rehabilitation restoration of the capacity to earn a livelihood now since the person has lost his legs he cannot walk that means he cannot go to his office or any workplace so what can be done alternatively is he can be employed in some kind of occupation that he can do from his or her home uh, so basically work from home or something like that that means change of occupation so the person is able to earn his livelihood then there is also social re rehabilitation where there is a restoration of family and social relationships and psychological rehabilitation a restoration of personal dignity and confidence so these are very important and this last two you can tell that there is immense important role of counseling for the person who is suffering from this disease or disability so these are different kind of rehabilitations some examples are given here establishing school for the blind people provision of aids for the crippled as i mentioned crutch or wheelchair anything reconstructive surgery in leprosy muscle re-education and graded exercise in neurological diseases uh, you have you may have come across a lot of uh, cerebrovascular accident or stroke patients where uh, they go through the different physiotherapy procedures so that is also very important and change of profession for a more suitable one and modification of life in general in case of tuberculosis cardiac patients and others so cardiac patients they cannot be involved in any kind of heavy activity for that he may need to change his profession so that is also vocational uh, rehabilitation so these are the different examples of rehabilitation just to summarize the whole thing there are four levels of prevention the primary i'm sorry the first one is the primordial then you have primary secondary and tertiary primary prevention has the modes of intervention two modes of interventions health promotion and specific protection under health promotion we have health education environmental modification nutritional intervention and lifestyle behavioral changes in secondary prevention the mode of intervention is early diagnosis and treatment in tertiary prevention the modes of interventions are disability limitation and rehabilitation so with this we conclude today's session if you like the video or if you have learned something new please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your batchmates juniors and friends we also have a facebook page that you can follow the link is given in the description take care and we shall see you in our next video